here we have an example of two common compounds. On the left we have formaldehyde, or rather methanol, and on the right we have acetone, otherwise known as propanone. In this particular video we'll be looking at the test to distinguish between these two types of compounds easily. So here are the chemical structures. You should remember that methanol is a kind of aldehyde. Aldehydes have a carbonyl, that is the C double bonded to the oxygen, at the end of the chain, whereas ketones, such as propanone, have the carbonyl group somewhere in the middle of the chain. Methanol and propanone are the correct names for these compounds. However, they're generally referred to as formaldehyde and acetone. Those are the common names. Methanol is the simplest of all aldehydes, and instead of having the hydrogen on just one of the sides of the carbon atom, we've actually got it on both. So it should theoretically be even more reactive than most aldehydes. Okay, so going back to our experiment, the other thing we need here is something called Tollins reagent, which is ammoniac or silver nitrate, as you can see here. So this is ammoniac or silver nitrate. Basically, this is a solution of silver ions which have been forced to become a complex. Now, if you remember, a complex is an ion of usually a heavy metal which has ligands, small compounds, small molecules around it. In this case here, the ligands are ammonia molecules. Now, the way we do that is we have a solution of silver nitrate to which we add sodium hydroxide. This produces a black precipitate of silver oxide. Then we add ammonia solution to this until the precipitate dissolves. That's when we know we have the silver complex. You don't need to know this. This is just a bit of background information. But this is the Tollens reagent. It's a solution containing this ion in particular. The reason this ion is useful is because it's pretty unstable and it's quite easy to reduce, as we will see later. As a comparison here, we will also do the Benedict's test as well. On to the test. I have two test tubes on the screen, which I have labeled A for aldehyde and K for the ketone. Just as a comparison, I've also got the Benedict, which I prepared earlier. First of all, we add some aldehyde. You can see that the aldehyde has reacted as soon as it's been added to the Tollens reagent. You can see that lovely kind of gray black precipitate, which is forming straight away. And with the Benedict solution, you can see that there is no reaction yet. So that's the aldehyde. Next up, we got the acetone. Remember that's also called propanone. and add that to the Tollens reagent, and you can see there's no obvious reaction happening, even if we add a little bit more. And again to the Benedict solution, still no reaction. Okay, next up we need to heat the samples. We did get a reaction already in the Tollens reagent, but the heating will allow it to develop further and also it will allow the Benedict solution to react. If you look here at this close up, we can see we've got a silver tinge already appearing. That's what we're looking for, that's the end result. So what's happening here with this reaction? Well, let's get back to our compounds again, our methanol and our propanone. 
The difference between these two compounds is that the methanol is easy to oxidize. It oxidizes readily. So what we get is the methanol being oxidized to become methanoic acid. And you can see the OH group, which has been added in red here. On the other hand, the protonome is not so easy to oxidize. It can be oxidized, but it takes a lot more effort, a lot more energy. For a simple test like this, it can't be oxidized and there is no reaction happening. Okay, now why do we get the silver appearance? Let's go back to our methanol again on its own. In our reaction solution, we have the methanol and we also have the silver ions. Notice here, I'm just using the silver ions, not the actual complex. The silver ions are colorless, so when you get them in solution, it's just a clear solution. But when we got the reaction together, we have a redox reaction. So whilst the methanol is being oxidized by the silver ions, the silver ions themselves are being reduced to become the silver metal. The silver metal is obviously insoluble in water and it will usually come out as what we call a silver mirror. If we're lucky, you can get a nice coating of silver on the inside of the glass tube and because of the reflective nature, it makes a beautiful mirror. Let's go back to the experiment. So we needed to heat up the, the test tubes. You should see in this footage that the black precipitate we had in the aldehyde and the Tollens reagent is changing gradually and getting more and more reflective. And this is a really simple test because it's very visual, it's quite an obvious change, and it's something that's quite easy to perform, as you can see. It doesn't take that long, whereas some of the other tests required for organic compounds can take quite a while. If we just zoom in here, you can actually see quite clearly we have a nice reflective silver mirror and this is the kind of result we're looking for just here. Okay, great. So that was the result we should have got if I had stopped the experiment there. But as you can see, I left it going. Basically, at this point, I was in the lab tidying up, trying to get everything organized and I came back and I found that it actually continued reacting. So we now have this kind of whitey, gray, weird kind of color. This is basically the silver, the silver metal that is, reacting again with some of the things in the solution and forming new compounds. It's a bit like silver tarnishing when you leave it in the atmosphere. One thing you should have noticed is the Benedict solution doesn't seem to have reacted at all. Now the Benedict solution should also be able to detect a redox reaction as well and that should have changed colour. Basically the solution I used was probably a little bit on the old side. I think it decomposed a little bit and some of the key ingredients aside from the copper sulfate were no longer present which is why it wasn't reacting. In fact here we have some footage which shows you that the Benedict solution has finally started reacting. That's partly because off screen I actually added some of the components of the Benedict solution back in and then put it on to heat some more. So we actually did get a positive result for that. And there's the final result. Um, with regards to the Benedict solution, it wasn't reacting in the time frame on the video I showed here uh, because there was something missing, some component missing. I added some, some of the components back into the Benedict solution in the tubes. And you can now see we have a positive result. With the Benedict solution, the concentration of the aldehyde will determine the final color. So in this case, it's like a greeny color, a bit reddy kind of in there as well. But you can get a nice brick red showing up or even you can actually get a copper mirror showing up, which is like the silver mirror, except with copper. So it's a lovely copper color. And here at the end, you can see an example from last year of a proper copper mirror, 
which showed up in one of the test tubes, and also the kind of silver mirror we might expect to get. Notice that actually producing a silver mirror or a copper mirror is pretty difficult uniformly. The glassware has to be really, really clean, which is pretty difficult to get. And usually you need to use concentrated nitric acid or something at the very beginning to make sure the glassware is as clean as possible to get the better result. Okay, I hope that's been useful and I will see you on the next video.